You got zero tips. Did you forget to enter them? Yep. Cool. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Join us every weekend for the 2021 AFL Final Series, live on the True Footer YouTube channel. Alright, g'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips, prelim final edition, baby. I'm joined once again by Druzy of the Drew Footy Show, which we record every Monday on your channel. So that should be out soon. Sometimes I upload before you, so it might not be out yet, but stay tuned. Druzy, before we get into the prelim finals, we'll take a look at last week. We both had the same tips last week, both tipped Geelong and... Brisbane. Brisbane. That's right. So we would have got one out of two each. However, you forgot to enter your tips and also your footy tipping. Yeah. <laughs> so as a result, you scored zero out of two and I scored one out of two. So the comeback is on, baby. You're only on 134 now. Haha. <laughs> and you're 79th overall. I am climbing slowly but surely into the top 376 with a total score of 123. And Dad is up there in 207th with 129 correct tips. In terms of the semi-final winner of the tipping competition, uh, obviously there was only two games, so uh, we actually had two winners this week. Of We had Glacier Boy, we had Max Dex, who both got two correct tips with the correct margin bang on point. So well done, boys or girls. The tipping leaders is Wing It Podcast for the third week in a row, and I think they're going to win it overall. There's only three games left in the season, but if you're right in the thick of it, guys, make sure you're all still tipping. Their total score is 144, so outstanding work with a cumulative margin of 716. So well done, boys. And before we start talking about the prelims, we'll give you a message from Manscaped.com, the sponsors of today's video. You might have seen it. I've said previously, bought my dad some nice Manscaped cologne for Father's Day. Nice. Um, so it doesn't have to be ball-related items, but it is a growing industry, and more and more people are aware about the need for manscaping. The ladies yes. love it. So go check out Manscaped.com's wide variety of products, and the exciting news is you get 20% off and free shipping simply by dropping the code TRUTH. 20 all caps, or one word, at checkout. But, let's get into the prelims. So, Drizzy, we had, uh, I would say, at least one amazing semi-final and one meh kind of game this week, but we'll talk about the teams that were eliminated before we start doing our tips for the new round. We'll talk about the Giants first, who mm -hmm. were dumped out by the Geelong Cats on Friday night at Optus Stadium. It was a, a strange game. It wasn't the sort of game where Geelong really came out and made a statement, I don't feel. They sort of coasted against the, the Giants, it felt. Giants were a little bit undermanned um, with no Green or Hogan. Uh, important avenues to go on. I think that showed. Mm -hmm. uh, by contrast, Hawkins was fantastic for them. Clutched everything that sort of came his way and then yep. nailed every set shot um, that he had the opportunity for. Whitfield was prominent with 34 possessions. I actually think Sam Taylor did a pretty good job on Hawkins, despite the fact that the Hawkins kicked five goals. They mm -hmm. just both played well. But ultimately, it's time for the Giants to depart season 2021 after 73 consecutive days on the road across four different states. So there would be some tired, tired boys. Yes. I don't know how keen they would be to get back to New South Wales <laughs> right now. Um, but either way, how do you think the Giants will bounce back from this? I think they uh, made many uh, a step forward this season that came out very poorly. But yeah, I'm going to back them into having a very good 2022 of like what I've seen this season, especially against the top sides in the competition. They won a final. And uh, yeah, lots of young players stood up this year, in particular like Sam Taylor, down back. Who's that other big defender that they have? Uh, bah, 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 young player. Bah, 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 bah. I forgot his name. Scatman? No. Coming in, Taylor. That's it. We've made that joke before. <laughs> yeah. They're uh, a real good uh, defensive duo who I think are going to hold good stead for the next season. And uh, yeah, I think they're going to really develop next year and establish themselves in that uh, GWS back line for a long time to come. Yeah, if thing. You few young boys in that team, actually. Uh, Connor Stone, did he kick three? He, at least kicked two. two. There, were, there were some yeah, very good two. shots of goal that he had as well. Bobby Hill, another one. Bobby Hill was good. And uh, Tanner Brun was also in that side as well. So a lot of youth in that team. And even there, some of their best midfielders like Hopper and Duranto are quite young. So They'll I think, be back. Yeah, I think they're well and truly poised for a, a period of success. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the Lions. Uh, by contrast, the team that probably would be bitterly disappointed with the way they've been dumped out of the, the finals. This is the... Second time in three years that they're going to yeah. go out in straight sets. They've won one of their six finals under Chris Fagan. And uh, they've only lost six games at the Gabba in the last three years. And four of them have been finals. So, Terrible. heartbreaking way to go out. It's probably compounded by the fact that Lockie Neal's a good chance to leave. Um, which would really be a finger in the asshole of Brisbane Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Where to now for the Lions? 
I think they uh, they got most things right this season. They just fell agonizingly short. Bulldogs mm. have been a better side all year. They've been in the top four just about all year and then just slipped out due to poor form towards the end of the season. But they bounced back last week against Essendon. Had a really good second half display. And then, uh, yeah, this week they got the momentum swing in that fourth quarter. And that ultimately cost the Lions their season. Uh, going forward, uh, their forward structure was thrown off a lot by two of their, their big men going out. But I think they had a really good season, the Lions subjectively, but when you look at the, the results that have gone against them, uh, not winning a final again, going out in straight sets, it's a bit stinky, but by no means you're not going to fall out of the top eight. I think they're going to be a good side for years to come. Yeah, I agree. The The stats don't make it sound good. All those stats I rattled off, that's it, all um, pretty damning. However, mm. I think they can be a little bit more proud of the way they exited this year compared to last year. Mm. Last year they had the home prelim against the Cats, and they weren't even close in that game. It was 40 points in the end, yeah. and the Cats walked all over them. Whereas this time they came up against a genuinely tough opponent in the Bulldogs, a team that many of people rated better than the Lions for most of this year. It's, at times, we certainly did. So they're a little bit unlucky to play such a strong team in the semifinals. So, yeah, we don't want to blow it out of you know context, mm-hmm. but um, either way, it's still heartbreaking for a team that's you know been dumped out three years in a row. All right, now let's talk about the first preliminary final of the 2021 final series, Uh, this time between Melbourne and Geelong, and it's a game that we're going to be really looking forward to, because we will be in attendance. Yes. So shout out to good friends of the channel, both Cade McDonald and Tim Diskin, who helped us get uh, tickets for this particular fixture. We're very privileged to get to go and see a prelim in Perth, between two Mm. quality outfits, and um, I've been on the D's train all year, so it's going to be good to see them in the biggest game of their season Mm, on Friday. Our teams are too shit for finals, so uh, yeah, this is going to be unreal. (laughs) Anyway, uh, the D's are obviously the home side in this, obviously it's a neutral venue, but uh, they're coming off the bye, having been the winner of their qualifying final against the Lions in a game they proved far too strong. Um, Even though the Lions sort of quelled them for that third quarter, I think held them goalless, uh, the Demons were far too strong and their typical contributors in Petrarca and Oliver were just tearing it the game apart. So Mm -hmm. Melbourne have proven that they've come into this finals with the right mindset and they'll be no doubt a very, very tough opponent for the Cats who, uh, as we discussed, have just beaten the Giants. Got a bit of a practice run at the stadium. Hawkins was on fire. Menegola had two goals and 29 possessions was very good as well. Did come at the cost of Brandon Parr fit these nuts. And he has unfortunately been ruled out for the season. So that is some team news for the Geelong Cats. They're 0-2 against Melbourne this year. Melbourne have mm-hmm. a bit of the, the wood over them, so to speak, um, including one uh, game at GMHBA Stadium. So how do you feel about Geelong's chances to knock off the Ds here? Geelong look really good at Optus. They battered Freo, which mm-hmm. isn't a massive feat, but uh, to comfortably win against... What? I'm kidding. I said they were bad. That wasn't even like, Freo are good. <laughs> yeah, they, they beat GWS, who have been a tough side, and beat them previously, like three weeks ago. So they've obviously uh, learnt their lesson, and they could potentially do that... Uh, against Melbourne, they could avenge that loss that they had because they were up by, what, 45 points in that game before going down by a point. Uh, Geelong fans are, I think, a bit 50-50 split. I know a few. Uh, Some are confident that they won't let that happen again and they can control the game and pile on the goals, which which we know that they can do through guys like Hawkins and Jez Cameron. Uh, but at the same time, Melbourne are going to have that psychological edge. They've they've done it already twice this season. They could potentially do it again. I'm going to tip Melbourne in this game just because I've been on the D's train all season long. But it's going to be an absolute blockbusting clash. Melbourne won't want to have the same game as they did against them the last time they played either. They're not yeah. going to want to lose control of this. Um, and yeah, let the Cats get on a roll. And I don't think they will. I'm going to tip Melbourne to win this. By 10 points. Yeah, fair enough. I, I'm i struggling to think of a strong argument for Geelong winning this game, to be honest. The only thing that comes to mind is, oh, it's Geelong. We have to respect how good they are when they want to be. Yeah. I don't, I've not been impressed over the last six or seven weeks. It doesn't mean they won't come out and play well. Mm-hmm. But even if they come out and play well, I find it hard to think they'll get within four goals of Melbourne. Ooh. I'm pretty confidently... Far more confident about this prelim, which means I'll get it wrong. <laughs> just consigning Melbourne to a heartbreaking defeat. But yeah. I think Melbourne win this by at least 25 points. The spirit has to live on at these land. Mm. You see the, the club camaraderie they have, and nothing can beat love. <laughs> 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 
We'll move over to the other prelim final. Port Adelaide is hosting Western Bulldogs, and uh, this is the second rematch of round 23. So Melbourne and Geelong met in the final round, and so did Port Adelaide and the mm. Western Bulldogs. Port Adelaide are the hosting team who got the bye week after um, dispatching Geelong fairly easily, doubling their score at Adelaide Oval, and uh, looking well and truly up for this finals level intensity. Fantasia kicked four on the night. He was actually really good. One of his probably his best game for the club, you'd say, being a final. Um, but he did injure his knee. However, yeah. it's, it seems that he's been. Uh, uh, declared fit to play. In particular for the power, Wines, Boak and Dersma all caught my eye and I think the power have really come into uh, a good level of form. What was that? I got my eye. Oh, dude. I think the power have uh, sort of found their mojo at the right time of the year and I think they're a little bit healthier now as well and I think the home crowd advantage will play a big factor here. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the Bulldogs have just pulled off a very, very incredible, improbable away semi-finals win against the Brisbane Lions in one of the absolute games of the year. Probably yes. top three Maybe even number one yeah. game of the year. It was unbelievable. It Crazy. Had drama, intrigue, romance. Love. <laughs> Bailey, Bailey Smith loves himself. Zach Charles. Bailey, I love him. Yes. Even though I just took the piss out of Bailey Smith, he was fantastic. Three goals. That absolute clutch goal on his left. Signaled to his uh, his forearm that he's got ice in his veins, which prompted an emergency drug test after the game. <laughs> on top of that, McRae had 39 disposals and a goal. He was fantastic. Bont was really, really good too. Uh, he missed a few shots at goal that uh, felt like he might have kicked on another day. Uh, and then... Bont was knee. touched as well. Yeah, so. the touch, that was unlucky. Mm. But yeah, so be it. I also thought Caleb Daniel was really impressive with his 31 touches. Opened up the play with his kicking. So um, important. Led to a, a couple of goals was it the Caleb uh, was it the Bailey Smith one I think was the one he, he sort of kicked it out from the goal square and, and found a player there was a few of them that he set up yeah. like just kick outs took it quickly and yeah gained sort of 10-15 metres on the kick and then just sent it straight up the middle to mm. open up the game yeah he, he was really really prominent Bont was in doubt for this prelim. I say was because it seems like he's been cleared of structural damage. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily declared fit to play yet, but that is always a good sign. There was a bit of talk about a PCL, which would have yeah. been a really worst case scenario, but uh, hopefully he gets up. And I think his availability will kind of swing my tip. So who are you thinking for this game? Yeah, Bont should play because I'm like smart and stuff. PCL is the least important. Uh, well, not the least, but it, out of like the MCL, LCL, ACL, PCL is usually like a two week to a month. And if there's no structural damage, if it was just like a bit of a stretch, he should be all right. And it's true. I that, think Hanabry played in a grand final with a PCL. Okay. Or something like that. It does happen, yeah. Yeah, strap it up. And obviously the magnitude of this game is the captain of the club. I think I think the bomb will get up for this. Mm. Who are you going to tip? I want to hear your analysis first. One thing I should also mention is Waitman is confirmed out. We yeah. talked about it with the Drew Footy Show. Uh, but Waitman um, out... You, you think he's probably going to kick a couple of goals, but that could be a, a big swing in this particular prelim final. I've been thinking previously the home team, Port Adelaide, but I've just got a s sneaky upset feeling here in my guts. Okay. I feel like I want to tip the Bulldogs. All right. But I don't know. Go ahead. You want me to tip? Yep. Okay, I'll say the Bulldogs shock the world okay. and win by four points to make a grand final. All right, now I'm going to say, because I'm a I'm a changed man, I'm a tra right, transformed go. man, why would you underestimate Port Adelaide? They are such a good footy side, mm. and I can't believe they're at home, they're going to win, bro. That's what I've been copying they all probably, season. They probably <laughs> will, though. They probably will win the game. I'm, yeah. It's more like I've just got a gut feeling. Mm. Like, the dogs just have this oh. ability to win these clutch moment games. Like, I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, they did it against GWS in 2016. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I just can't cop any more heat from Port Adelaide <laughs> fans, to be honest. Um, and yeah. Port Adelaide, yeah, really impressed me against Geelong. They're sort of on a, a trail of a vengeance. They beat Geelong after getting pumped by them earlier in the season. They beat the Bulldogs on the last game of the year, despite looking stinky. And, uh, yeah, to be fair, the best Western Bulldogs side didn't show up on that day. I actually do rate uh, the Bulldogs more than Port Adelaide, to be honest. But I think Orazio uh, was a massive in. He didn't play in their last meeting. And his footy IQ just opens up so many avenues to goal for Port, which they really lacked in that last meeting mm -hmm. that they had. Just didn't really have any class or end product, which he really delivers. You've already locked your teeth in. I'm going to tip Port Adelaide to win this one and go into the grand final against Melbourne, which I think is the best grand final. It's going to be in Perth. I'm going to go. Jesse isn't because he is going to stream it, and I'm trying to convince him to go. But anyway, I'm going to tip Port to go into the grand final against Melbourne. I'm going to tip Port to win by 14 points. I'm so torn on this game. I no, really you've already locked it in. Too bad. Port Adelaide fans, get after him in the comments. They're one and one against each other this year, and both times the away team has won. Mm. The Bulldogs won in Adelaide early this year. The thing is, the the level play, uh, Port played at in the first week was very, very high against Geelong. Mm, exactly. If they replicate that, 
They will win easy. Which they will, because they're fresh. Fuck. Well, that doesn't always happen, though. But. Oh, I'm so torn. I, like I, a PCL of Marcus Bunton Pelly. Yeah. All right, let, let, I'll just go to the dogs to be different. Um, but I'm 50 50 on it, eh? Hey? It is really tough. It is really tough. I've just gone on the majority side. I'd probably be happy if a port to win because of Anthony. Yeah. But I also do like the dogs. Yeah. I'm just going to sit back and try to enjoy this one. Anyway, guys, that is our tips. Very unconvincingly from my from my end. Uh, but I'm confident. Yeah, I can't. I'm going to actually enter my tips right now yeah. because I don't want to do the, ma- the same mistake again. Yeah. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching the second last version of Just the Tips. You will see you this season. Virgin. Uh, it's been a wonderful year and um, it's going to be weird not doing Just the Tips every Monday. Mm-hmm. We've got one to go. It'll be exciting. So make sure you tune in for that as well. But also tune in uh, to the True Footy channel on Saturday night. We're going to be doing the Port Bulldogs um, live, live stream, stream. and uh, we'll be going to the prelim as we said and you'll be vlogging that so um, keep an eye out for Drewzy's video on that uh, it's been fantastic and make sure you check out the Drew Footy show as well let me know your tips in the comments as always and we'll see you in next week's videos bye bye